Spring is a wonderful time for wildlife photography, but it can get a bit stressful without the right time management. And with that said, welcome back to the channel. I'm out today to look for some animals. As you might see, there's still snow around. I don't really expect winter to come back. It all melted down in the last couple uh, of days. It rained a bit more again, it didn't snow again. I hope still that winter comes back, but this is signs of spring coming. And I think there are quite some signs that animals are already getting active. And I want to show you some today at least what I found so far and maybe we also see some animals that would be of course the best case scenario I haven't seen an animal yet, but I'm pretty sure that they are around. And not only because I saw one the last time I was here, it's always also the surroundings. This type of tree and kind of the openness of the forest here. I mean, I think by, de by definition this is more a woodland because less than 50% of the ground is covered with trees or something. I don't think that would be a dense forest. Um, so this is maybe more like a woodland and not, not an open forest anymore. So this is exactly the surroundings where the Cape Kelly lives. And I also found Cape Kelly droppings already, so I'm close. I just really have to find them before they get aggressive because then I have to be ready to film them, right? I can't explain how much energy it gives me to be out here. Just to enjoy being out here and fresh air, smell, yeah. the green in these trees. It's just, it's, it's beautiful out here. March went colder and faster than expected, but even though animal sightings were scarce these days, there is no time to give up. Some people might not have seen it, but on my fall photo video I propagated the return of the Pine Martin. And I didn't give up on that dream getting a photo of the Pine Martin. I think it would be really 
elusive, exclusive to get that shot. So this year I will be still after that quite a lot. Now for that I will need a wildlife camera, probably all my wildlife cameras um, in the area where I recorded the Pine Martin back in fall. It came right after I put some honey out. You haven't seen me baiting much lately, but for this I think I will need some honey. In general I think that means that I got better at wildlife photography, that I need baiting less. But <laughs> I'm still having a lot of problems finding animals. And I think especially for an elusive animal like the Pine Martin, oh, this is not gonna work. We need at least some snack. And the thing with baiting is that you kind of have to commit to that, I guess. So if I see Pine Martin here in this spot, which by the way can be used from all directions, that's why I chose this one right now, is that I want to build a honey trap kind of. So that even though I can't be here every second day or something, that it there is like something leaking honey and that the Pine Martin, if it likes it, comes around and wants to have that little snack, it will always get it here. So that's just one idea what I'm thinking about, building a honey trap. The thing is, if I see it here, I will move closer to the road the next time. If I don't see it here, I will move further into the forest. I'm looking for a spot that's kind of easy, easy accessible for me to maybe set up a hide in any form. So right now I have some honey be behind me and yes, I'm just trying to get that photo this year. And of course I'm a bit scared that it's not gonna happen. But uh, I, I think that the Pine Martin here in this forest is a bit more active in daytime because there are less people around than in the other forest where I tried it, uh, where I tried it last year. I think it's also a really stressful time for me because I want too much. It's good with planning and I have wrote down a lot of things on my mobile but now you're gonna see what I'm all thinking about and I have at some times to prioritize because I won't get everything. Um, for example in this place, in this forest around here, I'm trying to monitor the beavers for example. I'm still out to find some hares in here, there should be a lot, but they're really good at hiding. Right now I'm setting up the Pine Martin camera, check, starting with that. You saw me in the other video looking like after signs uh, of Caper Kelly in this forest, but then I also have another Caper Kelly uh, location, that one from last year, which I'm observing. There are also beavers there, there are the dippers there, there is uh, a specific kind of forest there, which is like really old and big trees, uh, interesting. I'm looking for black woodpecker there, Other woodpeckers, uh, ravens, badger, the list goes on. Also pine marten slash fox there. Then I have my old, uh, no, not really old badger spot, um, which is also showing roadie and fox. And uh, yes, I'm checking the pine marten. I will check it in the old place from last year because that's where I've seen it already. So it's, it's so many things to do right now. Um, looking out for building stuff, uh, looking out for specific birds and mating periods right now, it's like the list is going on and on. So what I have to soon realize over the next two, three weeks, I think, is to prioritize some, some of these things to not end up with nothing in the end. Last year it was specifically the Pine Martin that kept me going. And this year I th think I should at least concentrate on three different things, be out m even more often than last year and try to get at least one of those three things to really make progress. Because I think you have to be really careful not to get stuck with one thing or too many things. So I think that's the road to success to pick out the three things and then get those. And of course there are single easier things you can do. but. Yes, if you're especially looking for beavers or pine marten, those animals can really uh, take away a lot of your time. Yes, that's difficult. I 
thought about a few things that I could show you in the absence of photographic success. And there is one topic I can't stress enough. In today's video I want to tell you a bit about the wildlife cameras that I use. I have three different ones and they kind of serve nearly three different purposes. And the first one I'm going to show you now is my smallest one. Uh, I don't even know the brand, it says it's somewhere. It's Brecom. It's kind of cheap. But the good thing with this one is it only uses half of the batteries that my other uh, cameras use, like the AA batteries, only four a piece. You can connect it with a cable here. So you can easily also, if you have a small device with you, read out the data. I don't normally do that. I look on the screen how much it recorded. It records in uh, photo and video. The video footage is just 720 pixels or something, but seriously, for a game camera, that's totally enough, as long as you can see what kind of animal is on there. And the purpose I use this for is basically to screen an area, because this camera reacts to a lot of stuff not that fast as some of my other wildlife cameras, but it has a good reaction and I normally, if there's an animal, I get it. And then when I know that there is an animal, I sometimes use the other cameras to get a closer yeah, input of the area. If you maybe heard something around, my, my dog is just running around here. And he's a bit crazy because he couldn't, ha couldn't be really out for the last couple of days. But this, really useful, small, cheap camera. Uh, I don't really know the names of the models, but I maybe try to put you some links in the description. So you don't need exactly the same cameras, just as you can get a thought of what might be good for you. But that's, that's how I work through spring. And now I want to set this up. You maybe remember the area around here. This is where I recorded the Pine Martin last year on Wildlife Camera. I will try it one more year uh, and see if it turns up in daylight. Uh, which it only did once last year and then never showed up again. And if it doesn't work, I will concentrate fully on the other new location because that's more, let's say, abandoned. There are not so many people going around there. Uh, nearly no one ever. And here it can be not busy, but there are enough people. Phoenix! Hi! Yeah, that's why we call him the Rocket Boy. Bye bye! With the second camera in place, let's see if there is hope for me. Here we are back with my maybe most used wildlife camera. I've seen it on a lot of videos. And what is the reason why I use this one so often? It's simple. This one has a screen to directly see if you got a result. And this one is maybe a bit more expensive than the first one, but not that much. I bought this one in Germany though, and there normally tech stuff is a bit cheaper. And this one I basically use also to observe an area, but it's especially an area where I have to go a bit further in. Um, and then I can directly look at the footage, see if something's there. And then I can rearrange the situation best bring another SD card and just rearrange the situation, maybe go in another angle, another location nearby, 
and see if I get still, if I get still the same result. Because now, for example, the Pine Martin has been here. And I didn't, couldn't check yet, like I saw a few videos, but I checked the rest at home. I'm not sure if it was already here when there was still snow, but the snow disappeared shortly after I set up the camera, I think. There's still some remnants, but yes, that's amazing. I got the Pine Martin here, so I'm thinking about do I look for a location that I think is better light-wise, photo-wise? Do I go closer to the road and see if it's still turning up? There are a lot of things I have to think about right now, but this is really great, just that you have mine. This is kind of a camera which I use the most because it's so practical to directly see your footage. This is also a great opportunity for you. Look at this scene. If you're looking after Pine Martin, this is kind of where you can find them. Maybe we have a lot of pine trees. Not pine trees necessarily, cone firs. <laughs> Don't know actually what just a pine tree is. <laughs> um, but a lot of conifers, flat ground, uh, not necessarily um, the habitat needed, but also it's, it's kind of wet here on the ground. I'm not sure if it has to be open, but I mean, just look at the scene and try to gain some knowledge from what I found here because this is obviously a location where Pine Martin live. To add to this series of two cameras that I showed to you right now, I also have one more expensive wildlife camera that I'm using right now. And this is the Cutback, I think it's called. And this one was a bit more expensive, not like insane, I think around 200 euros, 2000 Norwegian krona, something around that. And this thing is really robust, but it's the camera that I used the least yet because I didn't completely understand it yet. The other two cameras are kind of wide angle, so it's really easy to set them up. This one is a bit more narrow, but the advantage of this one is that it's first of all, I think the best, has the best weather ceiling. And also, it has the highest capacity and the biggest sensor of them. This has a 20 megapixel sensor. So with all of these cameras I can record video and photo, but none of these cameras, the other two cameras, is reacting as fast as this one. So normally with the other two cameras I observe the area and if I think something lives there in a den or something, they are not fast enough normally. Then it just looks like the animal is around, but it never really shows if the animal goes inside, if it doesn't do it right on the video. So in that case, I bring this camera in, because this camera is fast enough to see directly if something goes in or out of the hide. Uh, yeah, it reacts in a matter of milliseconds. But that's when I bring this camera in, and I hope that I get a bit more behind it to use this camera a bit more often in the future. Because, yeah. I was a bit uh, conservative with this one and didn't use it too much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you want to support the channel by liking it, leaving me a comment or even subscribing. I'm happy for everyone that finds his way here and enjoys my nature content. I had a long way to go from February to March to see something, but that long wait is finally broken. Soon I hope to share these findings with you. Until then, get out and enjoy spring. It is faster gone than you think. <laughs>